what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Alex here of Advanced Amazon Ads. I'm going to formally introduce Alex in a second, but Alex, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out of the podcast, right? So um, since we are going to be geeking out on how do you drive a lot more traffic and visibility to your books, because that's what Alex does. For authors, um, I was thinking, what other authors have I had on the podcast? We had Michael Gerber of the E Myth, um, my one of my favorites, Chris Voss of Never Split the Difference, Mike Michalowicz, who I know has worked with Alex as well. He's got several amazing books. Um, Chandler Bolt uh, has a great book which relates to uh, actually helping people write their book and many more. And Ian Garlic, who introduced us, so thanks, Ian. Appreciate you. Um, thanks, and Ian. yes, thank you. Um, this episode is brought to you by Rise 25. At Rise 25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream 100 relationships. And how do we do that? We help you run your podcast. You know, for me, Alex, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way to do that than to profile the people and the companies I admire over the past decade and have them on my podcast and share with everyone else what they're working on and their knowledge. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, you can go to rise25.com or email us support at rise25.com. And I have Alex uh, Strathdy, founder of Advanced Amazon Ads. You can find it at advancedamazonads.com. And like I said, he helps your book get visibility. He helps nonfiction authors who use their book to build their brand and as a lead generation to a service or a program or uh, fiction authors who have at least three books. And at 21, Alex convinced 11 colleges to send his book to 40,000 students across the U.S. And he's helped many authors get more visibility. Alex, thanks for joining me. What a wonderful introduction. Thank you, Jeremy. I I appreciate it. You've had some absolutely incredible names on the show, and I feel honored to be among all uh, all of them. Mike McCallowitz is on your homepage. And um, I'd love to hear some of your favorite books. We were talking about I, I have a bunch of credits in my Audible. So um, Systema, Systemology is one of the books you're reading now. Yep. David Jennings, uh, fantastic so far. An issue I've had is just systematizing. I feel like you create flowcharts, you write down paragraphs of how things should be done, and then it doesn't actually get done that way. So this book, supposedly, I'm not completely finished with it yet, but it's going to walk me through how to do all that. On um, Michael Gerber, who you had on the show, actually is the one who wrote the forward for that book. So I'm I'm excited. I think it's already it's already inspiring. But every book I read is always inspiring, and it's always about the few months after when you apply the knowledge that really makes the difference. So I love it. Yeah, and I'd love to hear any others, and we could talk about some of the books you've helped. One of my favorite uh, people and uh, companies actually is Sweet Process. You mentioned systems, so Sweet Process. For anyone out there, I did an, uh, an interview with Owen McGab, um, and they are a software to help you use it to uh, create processes for your business. So That's check right. that episode out because we geek out on all things systems and processes. And he's been, you know, doing this for many, many companies with their software. Yeah, that's, uh, and I wonder if David maybe mentions their software. I know he has a list on his website. I should go check it out. Maybe they uh, they know each other. Well, if not, we'll have to introduce them. Um, so any other favorite books uh, for you? For me, the love of nonfiction started when I no longer was forced to read books. I think all of us, you know, go through high school and we're all like told to read these books. And I don't know about you, but I was the kid who was always spark noting them and never actually, you know, just, it was almost like a game. How much can I BS, you know, this assignment that's due that I have to read, you know, Tale of Two Cities or, and I'm sure they're wonderful books that I should have read. But. My major is biochemistry, Alex. So like I was not an English person, so uh, for it. sure. Yeah. And then, you know, at some point you start opening up some nonfiction books and you're like, wow, that's really useful. And for me, I think, you know, for a lot of people, it shows, I think it's like constantly the top 20 books selling on Amazon, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I would lifeguard in the summers back in high school. And, you know, that that book just opened up my mind to, you know, the world of business and really self-help and and progressing yourself. So that was my introduction to self-help nonfiction. And it's been an obsession ever since, as you can see by this wall behind me. Let's talk about Ed Rush for a second. Uh, If you want to like show the book, if you're watching the video, um, 
hold up the book for a second and then let's talk about what you did with Ed. Sure. Yeah. So Ed, we've been working together now for about a year and he is a former fighter pilot and he has a, a multitude of businesses, but really he helps, you know, he, he's a wonderful business coach for many people out there. Many people have seen huge increases in their business by working with him. And I feel very lucky because, uh, you know, you know, we were still very young, kind of learning that toddler, learning how to walk. You know, he kind of took me out under his wing and he's, he's really taught me a lot uh, along the way. And in exchange, we've also been able to work on his book, which has been absolutely fantastic. And his book is basically the introduction to his entire world. So he does events. He has consulting. He has courses that people uh, take. He has a, an event coming up in Bend, Oregon in, in uh, late August. You know, he's, he's got all these things going on where he makes the value of a reader coming through his book is so much more than someone who's just reading a book, right? I think there's a marketing thing out there that's like, you know, you have to spend seven hours with someone before you're ready to buy from them. Now you can accomplish more than half of that just by opening, but just by giving someone your book, right? And he'll have people at his events asking, wait, like, you know, you don't know me, but like, I love you. And like, you know, this is, you know, like you've helped me so much. And Ed, Ed's like, you know, almost embarrassed because like, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't know these people, but they've been touched so much by his books. And so with the 21 day miracle specifically, we've just helped him get more exposure on Amazon he threw the book out there. It sold thousands and thousands of copies very quickly. He had someone set up his ads wrong where uh, they basically killed the relevance for his book. And so Amazon stopped organically showing that book. And so what we've been doing, and you can go type in the 21 day miracle right now and look at its rankings. Um, you know, he's back to selling, you know, 20, 30 copies a day just from his Amazon ads when, you know, it was pretty much stagnant at like zero to one copy, you know, per day. Uh, and so now he has more people coming into his back end and I work very closely with his business lead to track, you know, people who are at the, how that translates into sus- subscribers over time. We can talk about, you know, it's basically the essence of a book funnel, but on Amazon, we can talk about what that looks like, but that's really the work we've done with Ed. Yeah. Walk me through that for a second. And cause I can imagine the companies you work with, they have, if they have these pieces in place, it makes it a lot easier, right? Cause you could drive as much traffic or leads and maybe they buy the book, but uh, maybe they don't, but if only a small number, if they have a service or an offering, you know, get the net, go to the next level, it's huge, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what does yeah. that funnel look like? You know, like obviously people can set it up wrong and they could do it wrong. What's it, that ideal pathway look like? Yeah, and that's a really good question because there are some really key parts to it. And so initially it's writing a good book. I would recommend there's a book by Rob Fitzpatrick called Write Useful Books. Uh, came out relatively recently, but it's all about writing a book that's recommendable. And he talks about the whole goal of book marketing is to not have to market it anymore. And that's where you have, you know, like the body keeps the score, at least in 2016, this past year sold more copies than ever. Uh, the Big Leap by Gay Hendricks sells more. He just had his biggest royalty check ever and does no marketing for that book, like next to no marketing for that book. And so you have all these books that are just exploding over time and you wonder, well, why is that? And it's because they're recommendable books. And there's a very specific blueprint on how to do that. And so one, number one is to write a good book. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but there are, you know, people don't realize it is more calculated than you think it is. Um, number two is because that's, that's what just makes everything else worth so much more. Um, number two is to have your Amazon listing page, you know, done well. So a lot of people will just copy and paste the back of their book into the description page of their book on Amazon. It's the worst thing you can do. That is not a place for a description that is actually sales copy. You are trying to get your page to convert. And then with the Amazon ads, what you're, you know, essentially you're trying to one, get someone to view your ad. Next, you're trying to get someone to click on your ad. Now you're trying to, now they're viewing your product page. This is why that, you know, the, the, the copy there is so important. Now you're trying to convert them into a reader and then they have the book, right? Where do they go from there? So that first part is really where we, the sweet spot, we work with authors who are, you know, at that point. And then on the back end, you know, we, we do consult with authors where, you know, Ed's, if we, for those of you that are watching at home here, the first page in Ed's book, this free bonus page converts at about 30% meaning every 10 readers that buy Ed's book, three of them end up becoming a sub- subscriber. They end up going into the back end, buying other products, services. And so that is where having a reader magnet in your book is very key. And a quick little tip there is always put it the first thing in your book. Don't make the dedication the first page. Make the first page of your book your free giveaway. Just put why? it on the cover. No, I'm just Pretty kidding. Pretty much. <laughs> and you know, Jeremy, do you know why that is? 
because people only read the first five pages of books? People don't actually read the books. So that is why, you know, if you aren't making it the first thing, like, hey, you know, come get my so amazing thing. You won't believe it's free, whatever, you know, in the front of the book. And then your conversion rates are going to be much, much higher and also be willing to play around with it. We uh, work with another author, uh, Mike Capuzzi. He wrote the 100 page book. He recently switched out his reader magnet in his Kindle. It's the great thing about KDP publishing. If you're self-publishing, you can just switch out, switch it out really easy. And he's put in a new reader magnet in front of his book and his uh, subscribers has like 10 X. And so that is definitely uh, an important, the, the next part is getting someone to convert in your back end. And a lot of people will make the mistake. Like I was on a let me pause, let, one second. Yeah. Alex, let yeah. me just stop there for a second and break that down because someone's thinking, shoot, Alex, I should have contacted you before I wrote my book <laughs> or while I was writing my book. Right. Yeah. I don't have this reader magnet. So yeah. you have one solution, which is you can go in, you can update the the Kindle version, right? Which yeah. is the electronic. But you're like, listen, I get a lot of people buying the physical version. Do you suggest then they just go update it? Uh, it depends on how they're doing it, right? If it's, I don't know if it's even create space anymore or what what it is, but what do you recommend for someone who's listening? Like, I have a book. And if you don't, maybe you should contact Alex before because there's key elements you should include. Oh, but yeah. If you have Chandler one already, Bolt also yeah. his his podcast is like one of my favorite. Who's things. is it? Who's? Chandler Bolt. Oh, Chandler Bolt. Yeah, of course. Self publishing school podcast. You know yeah. whether or not you buy anything from Chandler, his podcast. Like I learned about book marketing from Chandler's podcast. Yeah. Like it is that simple. Um, but it, it is everything in there about funnel. And, and to actually answer your question for the paperback hardcover, it's not too late for you if you're self published. You can actually update those as well on the KDP side. It's not a, you know not a problem. If you are traditionally published, you'll probably just need to get, you know, your submit your edit edit in with the, the next print run or something, yeah, right? Just so do an a insert or something. Yeah. Something Throw an like insert that. in there that's neon yellow so they don't pass it up and that's your free bonus. Exactly. But yeah, check out the episode with Chandler Bolt. We, you know, we break talked about his book, which actually is very detailed. People should check it out. And um he kind of broke down some of those elements in there and probably on the podcast too. So oh, yeah. So you write a good book and you want to make sure you have the elements of, of like, not just writing a good book, but having the marketing elements. So anything else in the structure of the book, like you mentioned the, the reader magnet, are there any, anything else you want to make sure that people, if they are writing a book now, they should make sure to include. Another key part to that is going to be the social proof, right? And so this is what helps the book sell well over time. An author who just did that really, really well is Alex Hermosi with $100 million offers. Also a fantastic book. It's helped me a lot in our business. It has, uh, that book was released less than a year ago. It was released July of last year. Already has close to, if not over 5,000 reviews. And you ask, how does a book get that many reviews that fast? He has a three page, you know, a lot of authors won't even ask for a review. And when you don't ask for a review, no one's going to leave you a review on Amazon, right? So next step is you need to ask for a review. And there's selfless ways to do that. If you found this helpful, you can help other people find this information as well by leaving a review. That's like a one line sentence that's very common. And just having that sentence will, you know, 10x your reviews compared to not having that sentence, right? Next step is going to be this, which I had never seen done before and why it blew my mind. And for those of you that actually want to see the three page chapter, I send it out in my newsletter uh, a lot for, and for those of you that want to get on our, we have a three, two, one book marketing newsletter. You can uh, get just by going to our website and sign up for our free course for Amazon ads. You'll get added to our, our subscriber list. But this three page chapter is essentially just breaks down. What is goodwill? Why is it so important for entrepreneurs? And then says, want to get a leg up on getting that goodwill? go leave a review right now. It's going to help. Like he essentially just breaks down so elegantly these, you know, the reason why reviews are so helpful for other people and how, you know, he says like, if you're someone who's reading this book, you're someone who really cares about people. You're someone who really, really wants to see other people succeed. And so prove to me that you are that person, go leave a review because you never know, you know, that next mom entrepreneur that's going to become successful because you left a review and they found the book. And like, what a, like, what a sell, right? Like I, it was just the best sell I've ever seen a book. And so the social proof is so important and that's also going to help you get booked, right? Like if some CEO or, you know, some event booker or whatever sees your book, they seal those reviews, your speaker fee is going to be a lot higher if you have that social proof. So the other, you know, that's the third part of social proof. But when it comes to the actual, you know, funnel of someone, you know, entering in, going through, um, you know, m make sure that front part is taken care of, make sure you have a, a, a your cover of your book the subtitle and title both need to be big enough so that they can be viewed in a thumbnail, right? When people see books on Amazon, they're seeing it 
I, I forget what the exact pixel size is, but they're seeing it on a very small. small. So you need to make sure your subtitle is readable or else, you know, you're, you're shooting yourself in the leg. And so having the product good on Amazon is one important part. And the next part is actually making sure your book's going to drive people into the back end. So those are really the two main components. And then later on top of that is that social proof we just talked about. Got it. Yeah. So you could, there, those are the components of the book, not just writing a good book, but also having those elements that go to the next step. And then making sure you have the, you know, the, the Amazon listing page, really good copywriting um, and compelling copy there talking about uh, the benefits. And then the next is the conversion, the uh, ad piece, right? So now you're putting fuel on it. How does that piece work? Yeah. So Amazon ads are simpler yet far more complex. (laughs) They are Essentially, you don't have the copy and the images, you know, the the rich stuff that comes along with Facebook ads. There's none of that. It's simply with Amazon, it's all about algorithms. And so what you're really trying to do is get your book. It's a very simple ad. All you can do is customize it with 150 characters of text. Some authors don't even use that 150 characters of text. And we can talk about why. All it is, is your reviews, number of reviews, your title, and the cover of your book. That's all that gets shown in an Amazon ad. Uh, for most of the ads and, and for what most people have access to. There is some other stuff going on, but for the majority of listeners, I'm sure this will be more applicable to them. So this is all that is actually being seen with an Amazon ad. And what it really comes down to is you are trying to target search terms that people are typing into Amazon, right? So if you have an entrepreneurship book and someone types entrepreneurship into Amazon, you want your book to show up, right? That's simple enough. The second thing you're actually trying to do is to get Amazon to recommend your book themselves. And the way you do that is by, because it's, you know, it's different from Facebook, right? People are on Amazon with their wallets out. They're there to buy something. And so Amazon is able to make suggestions as opposed to a Facebook ad, which makes us, you know, you're on there to look at photos of your grandkids and it makes a suggestion to buy a, I don't know, like a new lawnmower. Like that's interruption marketing, right? Like that doesn't make sense, but Amazon actually gets to be your friend when you're on there looking around when you're actually buying things. And so they recommend other books. Oftentimes we click on those books. We end up buying those books. And so what you actually, the other thing you're doing with Amazon ads besides targeting searches is actually targeting specific products on Amazon that you want Amazon to see, hey, readers of the e-myth also read systemology. And then if you build up enough cross-readership, let's say you end up with a thousand people who buy both of those books, Amazon will actually start to push your book because they're trying to get sales too, right? Amazon, you know, is a marketplace. They're trying to, you know, sell books. And so they'll start to organically, without you paying for it, push your book to other books where they see there's cross readership. And that's the holy grail of Amazon ads. And that's what you're really trying to do is just tap into the recommendation engine, which, which Amazon is. Okay. So we're talking about native advertising on Amazon, not, okay, I'm going to, you know, build up a Facebook campaign and push it to Amazon. It's all Correct. native within Amazon. Cause I always picture what I love about what you're doing is it's very niche. Like you hear about a lot of people, <laughs> doing, um, you know, they do Amazon ads for products like e-commerce products, but they're not specializing in books specifically. So there's a whole different methodology. I imagine from, is there, is it the same platform where, okay, you want to advertise for your spatula, um, versus a book. There's a lot of commonalities, but it's the same platform that you're running them in. But at the end of the day, products just work differently than books. There's uh, the way people shop for books, the way people purchase books, uh, the way people consume the product is very, very different than the way that people buy and interact with products on Amazon. For those of you that remember, Amazon started as a book company, right? They were book distribution, right? Uh, Or book sales. And so although they're, you know, they're the related cousins and the great news, I mean, I actually love to steal my entire team actually came from the product world. And then I just teach them the twists with that come with marketing a book. Um, There is, you know, it's similar and we speak the same language, but it's like being able to code, but then the difference between Java and, you know, Python, right? They're different languages at the end of the day. Um, So same platform, uh, which is great for those that, you know, have products, you'll, you'll have an easier time understanding how to do books, but different at the end of the day. So you could talk about, you can maybe target um, different keywords and things in a book that's popular, um, that's related, um, that will, so you can get on that recommended area. Uh, I'm curious if, does it apply to products as well? Does it cross sell the books? Like if you have a book on parenting or a, an infant if there's a, someone's going to buy a baby bottle, will the book show up or is that it doesn't really work like that? 
Yeah. And I was just talking with another author, Cam Knight. He wrote Speed Reading. He has a, he has a couple, actually has some really fantastic books and, and a lot of them have over a thousand reviews. Um, so he's a very, very successful author. And we were talking about it. He's actually been targeting, you know, in one of his books, he talks a lot about whiteboarding, right? And to like, you know, whiteboard your ideas or whatever. And what is it that whiteboarders use? They use expo markers. And so he's been targeting expo markers and it's sold a ton of copies for him. So yeah, there is some So overlap. someone will go to buy like a whiteboard or expo markers, and then you're still able to possibly get on, you know, a Their recommended product page. Product page. Yeah. Now the you know Amazon the back end you have to be somewhat relevant Amazon has to see some relevance there and so you can't just like he the way he found this out was he targeted like uh one of the companies that makes ex- expo markers probably expo I don't know if that's the company is, is that the company that makes I don't expo? know <laughs> I don't know if that's like a Kleenex tissue thing anyway so essentially Amazon sold the relevance and so they show the book uh it is it can be very difficult to show up on products because Amazon oftentimes sees books and products very differently, but, uh, it is possible if Amazon sees that there is enough relevance between the two items. Got it. So, okay. Now you set these ads in place, you have the right structure, which your team works on the keywords and, and what should people, uh, is there a progression of budget that people start off with of spending? Yeah, there is a, there's different approaches you can take for the authors that we bring on. They are serious about marketing their book. Right, their goal isn't to sell a few copies here or there. Uh, their goal is to really push copies, and the only way to do that is to see Amazon ads as a significant investment. And so, we recommend a starting budget of around fifteen hundred dollars, uh, just to you know, just to start testing, and then we scale from there. So, we have some authors who you know do over twenty thousand dollars a month in ad spend, but they're selling a truckload of books. Right, they're selling you know a whole lot of books. And, you know, the sales, you know, equals the spend or, or whatever their goals are, right? So you st- we start off with a low budget and then based on their goals and based on how the ads are performing, we scale from there. So it can be anywhere uh, starting 1500 now, if you're someone sitting at home and, you know, maybe you don't have that kind of budget, you just want to, you know, get your feet wet, see what's going on. Then by all means, you know, with $500 a month, you can start to test some stuff yourself. But for those that are really serious about it, you do need to see it as an investment and capping yourself anything less than that is going to hinder your uh, one timeliness in getting to success, and then two, even just your level of success that you'll see over time. So, with the the Amazon ads, now someone buys, right? Next is there's steps for obviously you get it and you've put these things in place, so there's some call to action and what they should do next. What are some of the things that you look at, like you said, with some of these books um, after the fact? I don't know. Maybe we can we can talk about Mike Cohen or, or yeah. what you do with them. Uh, sorry, what is your question specifically? Um, talk about Mike Cohen for a second, because I want to hear about not just that process, but but after they buy, because you're you're looking at it. Um, you know, you don't have control over all those elements afterwards, but yeah. that's that's what they're judging it. Uh, yeah. So I'm, you're consulting with these companies say, Hey, here's how you help with the conversion yeah. afterwards so that we make the, you know, the most out of this campaign. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to depend on how the shop is set up, what they're selling, you know, all, all that stuff for Ed. We work with his business manager who keeps track of what is the platform they use. Um, anyway, they use something similar to click funnels, but it's not click funnels, basically, you know, tracking their conversion. Right. Um, and so they have, you know, we're able to see, you know, how many subscribers did he get this month versus last month. So we work with, you know, however it is. Sometimes we'll just get access to those platforms and then track it for the author for some smaller shops. They don't, you know, have the bandwidth to have someone who's hired to do those things. Um, for other authors, so like, you know, you asked to talk about Neurofeedback 101, this guy right here. Um, so this book had basically no other marketing besides Amazon ads released early 2020, and he's closing in on 10,000 copies sold. Now, Jeremy, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, 90% of books don't sell more than, what is it, like 200 copies, right? I would guess like 50, but yeah, Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so 10,000 copies is a lot of copies, especially for a no-name author. This is his first book he's ever written. And he has a clinic down in Jupiter, Florida, where he helps people overcome things like ADHD, past traumas, using a uh, a technique called uh, neurofeedback. It's mentioned actually in, in um, you know, a lot of people have heard the body keeps the score. It's actually um, you know an offshoot of uh, it's 
one of the uh, paths towards recovery that Bessel actually recommends. And so he'll have people walk into his practice in Florida who have driven two, three hours to get to him because they've said, oh, I read your book. And so, and I mean, you talk about, you know, he's, this is a medical practice, right? Like they, you know, their, their prices aren't necessarily cheap. And so you talk about, you know, people driving hours just to go see, you know, someone who's really good at this thing. Um, it's worked really well for him, right? So there it's a little bit more anecdotal because, um, you know, he doesn't have a funnel, right? He's not, a, you know, he doesn't come from marketing. Comes yeah, from- it's one piece of it. I mean, they, a lot of times people need, like, like you said, seven to nine different touch points. So maybe yeah. they check out the website, maybe they get the book, then they, you know, they call, they do some research, but it's one piece that lends itself to authority and credibility as well. Exactly. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. Alan Dib. Alan Dib. Yeah. So uh, results still pending. Uh, we actually just got a start on his book, but the reason I wanted to bring it up is because it's a, it represents, and I've got the book right here. Also a fantastic book. I actually found- The one page marketing plan. One page marketing plan. I, I read the book. It completely simplified how we do marketing. And then I was like, wait a second, I would love to work with this author. And I saw he was running ads and I see this a lot. You know, I'll see authors who have set up their ads a while ago, or they had their friends set up their ads for them and then don't touch them. And what happens is the first few months, Amazon, you know, wants you to do well. They give you kind of this great grace period, right? And so your campaigns will look good if you set up some auto campaigns. And then over time, those become money sucks. Amazon will start to show you for everything. You'll start to, your ROI will go way down and you'll just spend a fortune. And then over time, your sales will actually start to decrease and while your spend continues to increase. And so a lot of authors don't realize this. They just set up their campaigns. And they're like, oh, this is as good as it's going to be. And that's just not the case. Um, you need to be mining those auto campaigns, separating things out that are working into their own campaigns. You need to be negatively targeting to make sure you're not targeting you know, things that Amazon thinks you're relevant for, but aren't actually really that relevant for. And so what we're doing with this author, you know, who, you know, last time he even went into really his ads console was two years ago, you know, he handed us his ads console and was like, here's my ads. We took a look at it and, you know, they're, they're, he's not targeting any of the, you know, the latest books that have come out in marketing, right? Immediately, that's, you know, something you can do. He hasn't been trimming any of his auto campaigns. He hasn't been removing targets that are just spending money. And so we get into a book like that and, you know, it's just a matter of cleaning up because the book, if you look it up, it's top 5,000 all of Amazon, which you know, Jeremy, you and I know that that's significant, right? Anything that's selling under 100,000 copies is selling a few copies a day, you know, at least. And so he's 10,000. You can only imagine, you know, how many copies he's selling. I think his paperback's actually down to 5,000. So that's kind of the work we're doing with a one-page marketing plan Alan did. Uh, basically, for any of you that are listening out there and you're like, well, I set up some auto campaigns, please look at them because I'm afraid for all of you out there who are spending a fortune on your ads because you think it's just to set it and forget it. It's definitely not. Alex, what I'm going to do is, and we didn't plan this ahead of time. Um, I'm going to share my screen and we'll look at Amazon and maybe do a breakdown of some stuff, some books, uh, what they're doing well, what they're not doing. I don't know what's going to show from my Amazon account. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, uh, this keg top is not for beer, but it's actually for sparkling water that I make. So um, <laughs> the where should we go? Let's take a look at the, I don't know, the business book section. Where, where should we go to take a look at some of what people are doing well, what they're maybe not doing well? Yeah. And my apologies. The, uh, we happen to live in here in San Diego and there's a lot of military presence in San Diego. So if you hear hel helicopters oh. flying over, there's I think one going over right now. So my apologies for that in advance. But yeah, let's just go ahead and let's do what most of us type in. Let's type in business books into the books uh, section there. All right, so you might not know this, but the entire, everything you're viewing right now is actually an ad. Uh, the way that you can tell this is that little sponsored tag. Mm, right there. That is anytime an ad is being placed, you'll see that little sponsored tag. So like sales secrets, talent and nuclear effect along with Ray Dalio spends a fortune on his, uh, well, he's a billionaire. I'm sure you can afford to, uh, I'd love to, if anyone knows Ray Dalio, there's so many things I want to tell him that, he, that will save him a lot of money right. uh, with his ads. Cause he seems to just throw things out there, but continue. Uh, so if anyone on. knows any of these people, yeah. you can connect them with Alex. So Ray go. Dalio, boom, just we'll shout that out. Yeah. So keep on uh, giving a scroll there. Um, you know, okay. So here's some organic posting, right? Like these so are, this is these organic. Are, these, yep. these top three here, sales secrets, talent, and the nuclear effect, are these all sponsored? Those are all paid. And even that these top are all place. Yeah. Uh, so even the very, very top. And right here. Ray Dalio's books. Uh, yeah. Those are called brand, uh, it's brand placement. And so those actually have the 
uh, there, it's more of a long term. If you are really trying to meet, reach the masses, which Ray Dalio is, then it can make sense for you. But at the end of the day, those are going to be some of your lowest converting. Uh, places. And you can also only utilize that space if you have three books. This ad will probably end up getting shut down, the one that you're seeing at the top, because it's only got two titles. And Amazon, well, unless he's probably just spending such a fortune that Amazon's like, we'll let him do whatever he wants. Um, but that's actually, uh, you're not even allowed to use one of those spots with just two books, what we're seeing right there. Um, scrolling down here into the top three, uh, you know, the top three, you know, paid placements at the top. Uh, remember what I said, you know, all you're seeing there is the title, the reviews, the author's name, and, you know, the, the copy it is, right? And these are ads. There's no, these people aren't even, you know, don't even have text on their, uh, you know, on their ads. And so these, this is going to be the, you know, these people are probably paying to show up for business books, probably paying in the realm of 2 to $3 per click uh, just to show up there. All of these books definitely need to back end. None of these books are trying to make money on the book themselves because, there's no way someone can be at the top of business books and um, you know be able to sustain that. And don't be surprised if you go and type in business books on Amazon right now and you get three different books. It is a real-time auction that Amazon runs anytime someone performs a search on anything. And so essentially anyone who's eligible to be displayed for a certain thing will be thrown, you know, their hat, their name will be thrown in the hat. And then based on your relevance to the search, so Amazon is looking at Jeremy's. Uh, you know, his reading data, you know, his, uh, his backend, you know, what books, you know, you've probably bought some business books in the past and they're deciding, okay, based on what Jeremy's typing in and the books that he's bought in the back, these are the people who are, they know everything these. about me. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. They know everything about all of us. And we keep, I think I, I saw like Amazon just came out with like echo dot and it was like, add it to your like bed night stand. And I was like, what's so they can hear your talk in the bedroom too. Like they literally just hear everything. Um, so yeah, so these are uh, just to give you some back end. you know, this is why these ads are being displayed. Also, you know, cost per click. If you aren't as relevant to the consumer, you're going to pay more. If you are more relevant to the consumer, you'll pay less. It's that simple. So if we keep scrolling down here, is there a strategy here? So you could see Ram Sharan here. It says only one left in stock. The other ones have a free shipping to it. Is there anything with that or is that just a, they're using a different fulfillment? Different fulfillment. Yeah. So they're fulfilled by, you know, an Ingram Sparks or they're, you know, fulfilled by someone other than Amazon, um, which, you know, at the same time, you know, it's, it's like it can work for you. Like scarcity is, you know, is a currency. Yeah. And so, you know, it's great to see, okay, only one left in stock, but at the same time, if you're out of stock, you're missing out on sales. Yeah. So um, yeah. yeah uh, I'm curious what you'd advise there. Like if this person's your client, um, because you know, you want to eliminate friction and there's also a shipping cost, right? Yeah. So people are used to not paying for shipping on Amazon. So I don't know. This is, uh, this goes back to the whole question and we could do a whole episode about this of traditional versus self-published, right? Because, you know, there are pros and cons to each. I've talked with many authors about why they do certain things. There's a lot of authors who still go traditionally published, but increasingly you have the, you know, like Ed, if he wanted to change something in his book tomorrow, he could have it done in literally minutes, right? Um, so it's, it just depends on, you know, where you are. There's also people who go self-published to get a publishing deal. You know, you'll, your you know, advance, you know, if you have a self-published book that sells well, it could be the difference between a $20,000 advance and a hundred thousand dollar advance. But, you know, that's a whole different topic for a whole nother day, I would say. So what about these ones? Maybe, I don't know if you want to open up a few, take a look at their copy or just, yeah, we just, can, yeah. let's go ahead and click on uh, your next five moves right there. And again, you know, you can see the difference, like what's that book on the left, 4,000 reviews versus Brendan Byrne, Byrne Anson, you know, 806 reviews, right? Like yeah. which business book looks better to you, you know, the one with 4,000. So that's why reviews are so crucial. Um, so taking a look at the product page here, we can scroll down, uh, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. All right. So here's uh, right there, frequently bought together. That is the recommendation I was telling you about. And there's actually the book that I recommended at the beginning, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Enough people have bought the next five moves where uh, Amazon, that have also bought How to Win Friends and Influence People, that Amazon is actually recommending this book. No one's paying for that placement, right? Like that is incredible, right? Like Amazon is recommending this person's book and they aren't paying for it. This is what you're trying to do with your Amazon ads. You are trying to associate your book with other books. That's how you really, really move copies on Amazon. So if Patrick Bet David comes to you, Alex, he's like, Alex, I want to turn on the heat. Would you recommend, because he's already organically ranking, I don't know, is there a way to tell if he is running ads through this or not, um, Amazon ads? But if he's not, would you recommend looking at these two and really 
targeting those keywords so it drives up even more? Yeah. Or- and I would also look at leveling up. So a lot of, one of the strategies we'll use with our, with our authors is, you know, we'll take someone who like, you're not going to rank if you launch a book tomorrow, you're not going to rank on rich dad, poor dad uh, anytime soon. Right. Because that book has been out for so long. It has so many, so much cross readership with other books that like, if you try, you know, maybe a hundred people who have bought rich dad, poor dad buy your book. That's great. But you're competing against other books that have cross readership of hundreds of thousands. Right. And so what your goal is to level up now, right? So, okay, you start off with what is, what is the low hanging fruit? Let me find a couple of books that are ranked around 100,000. Let me get on those product pages. And then once you start organically getting traffic from those product pages, then you're like, okay, I've got copies moving. Uh, let me now target some higher, you know, some, some books that are a little bit more competitive. And so rank up, right? So start off, you know, if you're just launching your book, you don't have an author name, start off with, you know, books that are 100,000 and then go up from there. Uh, and that can help you, you know, rank even higher, right? So now maybe he'd look at, you know, ranking for other biz- business books like Rich Dad Poor Dad. Although I'm pretty sure How to Win Friends and Influence. Actually, no, Rich Dad Poor Dad is ranked higher. So I bet if we went to Rich Dad Poor Dad, I bet we'd actually see your next five moves on the uh, recommendation engine. Hmm. Um, but if we continue to scroll down here, uh, these are all ads. So products related to this item. Uh, there's a carousel page, you know, one to 498. These are all people placing ads. You can actually see some of them have the 150 characters of text, right? So like Brendan Bernison, you know, he's got his 150 characters of text there. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, so these are uh, ads that people are, are actually running. Page one is going to be a whole lot more expensive than page 263, right? So that's something to keep in mind. And then also how relevant you are also determines, you know, how much you rank at the beginning as well. Um, uh, if you continue uh, scrolling down here, Oh, yeah. Rich, I knew Rich Dad Poor Dad is like everywhere on Amazon. You can't escape it. 82,000. Wow. Yeah. Explore similar books. This is where, again, organic. So it switches back and forth is like, mm. you know, kind of similar placement. One you have to pay for, one you don't, right? The whole goal is to get to a point where you don't have to pay for your bookmarking anymore because you're organically, I mean, you should always still pay for, you know, certain placements, but you know, these, these page one to five here, all these books are being recommended organically. They're not paying. Uh, for any of these placements. And then uh, keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling. There is like more. There's so many carousels all over the place. We keep scrolling. And also for those of you that have heard me talk about rank, if we stop right there, we can see that the best seller's rank for this book is 1,800. Um, that is what I'm talking about. Anything that is um, under 100,000 is selling a few copies a day. That's how you can figure out the rank of a book. Uh, and then if we keep scrolling here, let me know if I'm getting too much into the weeds. This is that. great. Keep it, keep yeah. it going. Uh, yeah. Keep scrolling down. Uh, keep scrolling. All right. So here we go. More. My places. God, Amazon will maximize everything. It's crazy. They, they really do. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. So as you can see, I mean, we could go on for, you know, but essentially when you are, you target two things. We're going to we hit the bottom of the page, Alex. I don't care. Yeah. You have to skip they, your next meeting. No, I'm just keep kidding. going. There's going to be like two or three more, right? Uh, <laughs> so these up. are also paid placements. These are paid placements as well. Oh um, lower, basically the front and further to the left you are, uh, or the more to the top and left of the page you are, the more you're going to pay yeah. for that placement. Right. So it comes down to that. So uh, these people right here, are these people um potential clients for you then? Like yeah. we have Gino Wickman. I've had Gino Wickman on the podcast before, um, get a grip. So they are doing some kind of form of paid yep. marketing for their books here. Yeah, I, I love it because we are so niche and don't tell anyone else about this. Um, we're really the first ones to figure out Amazon ads for nonfiction authors. And so, you know, there's a lot of people who come approach it from the product side and some of them do see success, but they're not focused on books. They don't understand the value of the books. They don't understand the metrics that an author actually cares about. That's the biggest differentiator is actually, you know, there, obviously there's a lot of difference in the style of campaigns that you run, but also just understanding the value to, you know, the, the, the author, like what is it the author is actually trying to accomplish with this? I would, me- I would probably say that every single one of these books we're seeing right here have a backend. Um, or some other way. And so you can actually sell yourself short if you're working with someone who doesn't understand what you're actually trying to accomplish with your book. Um, and so it's great. I love living in this space because I, you know, one, I love books. Um, but two, I, I also just understand, you know, what it means to be an author. I actually, if you scroll up to the very top here and go type in, you know, book funnels and Amazon ads, um, you know, I always like to say, never trust someone who doesn't walk with a limp. Um, I'm actually, I, I know this stuff because I do it myself. Book funnel, um, I have a book say? which Adam leads to new subscribers, which leads to my subscriber list, which we get we get clients from. Um, so if you scroll down here, uh, yeah, we're on. Yeah, there we go. We're the first organic ranking 
um, for that. And then, you know, we've, we're up to 111 reviews and we even, uh, there's many different strategies you can use. Um, we actually use a free, so we have the book listed as free and that's just because it maximizes the amount of copies and that actually maximizes the amount of subscribers coming in. Now, depending on what you're selling, like if you're selling thousand dollar, you know, consulting, uh, programs, I think it's better to have some skin in the game. You know, I think someone paying 99 cents for your book or $1.99 is important. Um, so it's also just a matter of playing around, testing different things. So totally. So, um, Wow, this is wild. Uh, as <laughs> far as how much it makes money. Yeah, I mean, so we have this, and it looks like Brandon has two books here that he's advertising. Yeah. He's got Sales Secrets and the Seven Figure Social Selling. Yeah. Um, so he's really kind of taking up some real estate, it looks like. He understands the value of, of these ads, that's for sure. Um, and then, so now we just kind of get into the review section. But you, if you go to the bottom, you'll get more. Yeah, there, I guarantee there'll be more carousels down at the bottom than Amazon. That every every area oh, yeah. Yeah, customers have viewed this. This is this is organic. Also, right. This is again. This is organic. And then scroll down again. I bet there'll be some more paid. Uh, so then they'll show you some products. So yeah, these are some more. So you can just see how much organic. You know, if you start. Okay, I guess there's no more paid for this one. But uh, every time you search and every time you look at different books, you'll see different. Um, you know, you'll you'll see different types of carousels that Amazon tries to throw at you. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so let's, what about the copy on here? How is, how is he doing with that? You mentioned, you know, you don't just want to paste the, the back of the, the book onto the page. How is Patrick, but David doing with that? Yeah. So uh, click read more on the, um, so one, you know, like he's taking an approach of validation first. Um, if you look at the sales copy for like, click back to our, my book over, over there, book funnels and Amazon ads, um, you'll see the sales copy. The goal of it is actually to attract from the first second, right? So if you click on that book page, uh, over there, that's loaded, uh, you'll see here, your book was meant to help build your brand. Why can't you find the readers, right? Immediately addresses the pain point, uh, you know, mentions a few things. Um, I got to give all the credit here to Brian Meeks. Uh, he is like, he's one of those people that doesn't do any marketing himself. He's just so good at what he does that people can't help but hear about him. Um, he has a Facebook group um, that's actually for Amazon ads. That's over 10,000 people. He does, you know, he, he has multiple books about book descriptions. He's like, he's an indie. He's one of the people who just got in early with indie publishing. And I've seen like when I first wrote my book description, it converted at, and when I say converted, I mean the amount of people who clicked the people who purchased. It took me 20 clicks to get someone to buy. Um, now it takes me six clicks to get someone to buy. So I can spend, or, you know, let's say one to five, one, you know, one in five, just for the math sake, you know, now I can spend four times more on my advertising, and get, you know, um, and get better placements instead of the one in 20. That's why book description converting is so, so important. Now there's other factors that go into it. Um, but just for brevity's sake, we'll, we'll leave it at that. But, so this is a good example is you want to hook, okay, here's exactly what this book is about. Do you go back to the next five moves? It just says like, here's why we're so great. It doesn't say immediately, here's what we're solving. Here's the problem yeah. that we're solving. It's a lot the of social proof. The number one YouTube channel, almost, you know, Ray Dalio, he has a quote for him. Well, like what problem is this solving? And so like initially when you, you know, you had to click the read more to even get down to figure out what the book was about. That's not really that great. This author could probably improve their stuff a whole lot more just by addressing the problem first. So that's my two cents, but I refer back to uh, Brian Meeks, who's taught me about copywriting. I can't, I, I just can't recommend him enough. I don't even think he has like a website because he's just so low key. I would find him on Facebook, but he's one of the best copywriters I've ever, uh, I've ever met. What about, um, I don't know if there's a strategy to this or not, but uh, I noticed you have co-authors. Yeah, that's just to give my team some cred. Okay. Um, you know, so that, I, these I are very much like you. we succeed and fail as a team. And so it's a matter of them being able to, you know, if they ever, uh, you know, move on to, to other organizations. Well, actually, Gabby's already moved on. She's now working for Microsoft, but she's now able to put on her resume, you know, best-selling author. And they've helped us develop our strategy in Amazon ads. So I, I'm very much a, you know, we win together, we fail together kind of guy. And so that's why they're my co-authors. How should someone approach the forward, right? It looks like you have Carrie Oberrunner here. Yeah. Why Carrie? And, you know, what should people think about the forward? you're the master at partnerships and relationships. You get someone to write your forward. They're going to, you know, obviously, you know, want to promote the book, share the book, social proof of, you know, Carrie is one of the you know, best names in self-publishing. He, he runs Ignite, uh, Igniting Sales Publishing. 
he's also just an amazing human. So a lot of it was just because I, like I've known Carrie for a long time. We worked with a lot of his clients, but at the same time, you know, his name carries a lot of weight. So that's why, you know, at the forward, um, but you know, don't, you know, like I have a genuine relationship with Carrie. It wasn't just like, Oh, I'm going to use Carrie to like, my forward. like I've been working with Carrie for close to two years now. So um, I just, did just want to mention that a little bit. Of course. I mean, it goes without saying you want someone who's going to help the book, but also that you, you know, really believe in as a human being and a business person or whatever genre that person's in. Exactly. Yeah. Cause I mean, yeah, you're, you're associating your brand with theirs, right? So Alex, first of all, thank you. I want to point people towards your website. They can check out more, learn more advanced Amazon ads.com. And like we mentioned, a perfect fit for you is someone who is a nonfiction writer, but has like an actual back end to it because hopefully by this point you realize you're not going to get rich off a book, especially if it's you're, you're making like $3. Everybody keeps the score. Then, right. I mean, there's, it's very, very rare, right? I mean, there's people that, that do make a living off selling books, but for the rest of us, normal human beings, that's, that's less likely. Um, so having a back end service product course, something that actually will lead to uh, a larger lifetime value of a client. Um, also, I'm curious why you even go with fiction, right? Like you say fiction, three, three or more books. Um, so those people must have approached you as well. Very, very small. In fact, I, when, as soon as you mentioned that beginning, I was like, oh, we don't actually really work with fiction anymore because that in itself is its own type of targeting. Like there is so many subgenres within subgenres. And if you don't understand those very minute subgenres, uh, it's like, do what you know, right? Like I read, you know, a business book a week. I understand business books through and through. I know yeah. the different types of business books. I don't read fiction. So, and my team doesn't read fiction. And so are we the best to do fiction books? Not, we're not as good as someone who actually understands your specific like lit RPG uh, genre. I have no idea what that is. And there's a lot of authors who fall under that category. Like you need to understand the books in your category and go from there. So um, the reason why three books or more is because the only way fiction authors actually make money, and this is just for any of you who might be listening and fall into that category, is by uh, your read through rate. So, you know, you want, you won't make money on book one, two, or three, but you'll make money on book four through 10. That's how you make money as a fiction, uh, fiction author. Um, but that's, you know, another topic for another day. So primarily just nonfiction. We do still have, like, I have some books behind me. We do work with fiction authors just because it's worked so well for, um, you know, they've been with us for a long time and it's worked well, it continues to work well, but we actually aren't taking, I have other people I refer out to for, for fiction. So. But I mean, also children books too. I find like there's a lot, there's a growing number of business people that are like, oh, I have this children book of me, make Mike McCallowitz, for instance. And I mean, so there's people that cross over that maybe are entrepreneurs, business owners who wrote a fiction or a children's book that those people also may qualify for their service as well. It's maybe less common though. I imagine. And with my, yeah. And specifically Mike released my bunny, my money bunnies. And the reason why we took that project on is because we understand the reader. We're not targeting kids. Kids aren't buying books on Amazon. We're targeting parents who are fiscally responsible, who want to teach their kids about money. We target that audience all day long with nonfiction books. So it really wasn't that much of a, a leap for us to, uh, to be able to advertise that. Book. Yeah. That also leads to his other books. That also leads to other services he has. I mean, one that I'm po that's popping in my mind is Ben Settle. Uh, if people follow copywriting. He's, you know, talks a lot about email copywriting. He is, he has a bunch of fiction books, but I think some of his fans who kind of cross over to his business copywriting email newsletter also follow him and find him through his fiction book. So there, there is some crossover. It's probably not as common though. Yeah. Uh, it's just every use case is individual. And, and so, you know, our acceptance rate is only about 10, 20% of the people who we bring on just because a lot of people, um, you know, we're very focused on who we can serve and who we can't serve. And there is uh, for the people who we can't necessarily serve, or I want to see like, Hey, can you just run some campaigns yourself? Come back to me, see, you know, show me your results, show me what your numbers are. And then we can talk. I actually have a free course, which walks, walks you through pretty much 99% of what our process actually is. Mm -hmm. um, I don't charge for it. I used to have a paid course. I ended up making a free course, made it even better than the paid course. And so you can go get that just by visiting uh, www.advancedamazonads.com. So, and if you're, you know, if you're not ready to make that leap or you just want to test some ads out yourself, you know, um, that course is a wonderful place. Um, I would pay attention more to people who teach Amazon ads about products than people who teach Amazon ads about uh, books, because I'll tell you why, Jeremy. It's because people in the book space, a lot of the people who made early money with Amazon ads are, it was just a matter of they threw the books up there and there was more demand than supply. 
Um, we are no longer in that phase. There is now just as as much supply about you know, as much supply as there is demand. And so those people who ran Amazon ads, they were highly successful. They're like, wow, I'm so good at this. I should create a course. They don't actually know a single thing about Amazon ads. They were just early to the game. Um, the people who are on the product side of things, they've been investing millions. They understand this through and through. There's a lot more money that's going into the educational materials for products than there are uh, books. There's still a lot of nuance, which is the sweet spot we sit in. Um, but yeah, so just a word to the wise there about, you know, pick your guru wisely. Everyone check out advancedamazonads.com, learn more. And Alex, thanks so much. Jeremy, such a pleasure being on here. I, I really appreciate it. And you've had some rock star guests and I'm humbled to be among them. So. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 